every time I order, without fail, this dish has to be part of my takeaway order. And what is that, Mum? Crispy chili beans. Yes, and do you like it? Yes, I do. It's very good, isn't it? Yes, especially when it's crispy. Yes. That's why it's called crispy chili beans. Yeah, and it's very easy to do. Just takes a bit of time and effort, but we'll show you that right now. If you want to learn how to cook Chinese food at home, you need to be following this page. We're two professional Chinese chefs and we teach you how to cook Chinese takeaway food and traditional food at home as well. If that's your kind of thing, subscribe now. Yeah, and hit the like button. And notification button to keep us on your feed. So, first off, we're going to have to prepare some beef. And right here we have what, Ma? Today is a silver side. Silver side. And if you'd like to start preparing this, yeah, we will. We will first of all we're gonna get get rid of this what you call it? Sinew. 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 Yeah. Sinew. Sinew is like new friend. Friends. Anyway, the reason we want to take that off is because that can go tough. You can actually yeah. just set that aside, brown it off, and then use the a stock. Yeah, use it for hey. stocks and stuff. Oh, he's alive. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what what you do, you just get into it. Just follow the, it's just as you cut it, you pull it and you just slide away, yeah? Yeah, once it starts going, it's very yeah. easy. It just wants to peel off itself. Also, most takeaways are gonna be using either top side, silver side, or in some cases, pad. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's, that'd be good enough. And once you fry it, it will just go crispy. Crispy anyway, yeah. What about the other side? Is the other side need any trimming? I don't know, I haven't seen. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, not too much. I love this. Yeah, it just tastes, tastes too much like the smell of cows for me. It's all prepared now. Yeah. It's ready to cut into little however size you want. Little strips is what yes. one means. Also, there's a quick tip. If you can't cut it when the meat is like this, you can, in fact, put it in the freezer for, for about, I'd say, an hour, and that will make it tougher so it's not so... Like squidgy. So, uh, soft. soft. Yeah, a bit more solid. Soft, yeah. You don't want squidgy meat. Yeah. Soft meat. A bit firmer to cut. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so when you're cutting it, you do want it firmer. Mm -hmm. So less squidgy. Yeah. Anyway, so now mum's trimmed it. We're going to find the grain. And on here, the grain of the meat fibres goes this way. So we're going to cut with it to start with. And then we're going to go across it. And that helps keep the meat less stringy especially when you're deep frying it because it's going to go really dry. If you cut, if, if the meat when you bite into it is with the grain, it's just going to be like trying to bite through beef jerky. Okay, yep. You're going to get small beets, small peas, big peas, okay? So this is where you, you cut your thickness. Mum's cutting them quite thick, but if you want them thinner, you cut the steaks thinner. Now we're going to cut across it. Again, if you want them thinner, you can cut them thinner. There's, yeah. there's no real size. We like them quite chunky because there's yes. more meat in it. You can taste the beef. But again, it's completely optional how thick or thin you have it. Now, because we've got so much, you can actually just freeze these as they are. We are going to freeze these as steaks. And then you can just use them as and when you want to use them. Or alternatively, you can actually cook them all off in one go and then freeze them like part cooked. So they're cooked all the way through, but they're not finished. So they're not fully brown on the outside or crispy. But today we're going to put these in the freezer. Use this part. Yeah. But like I said earlier, you can prep it all at one time. I personally think it's better for you to freeze them like that and then just use them as and when you need them. It takes up way less space in the freezer. Because when you do it like this, it takes up a larger quantity. But again, it's down to how much time you have at the end of the day. After slicing, you're going to put the beef into the bowl. Yeah, a bowl. We're going to pour, pour some water. Cold over. water. And you want to completely submerge that beef. And then we're going to place some salt in there and mix it up. And we're just trying to draw all that red pigment out. If you don't do that, you'll notice that when you deep fry this, there's loads of like weird 
brown spots everywhere. And that's where the red pigment has come out and burnt and it tastes slightly bitter. You don't have to do this, but it does make a difference. I'm gonna do this two or three times until the water is nearly clear. We're going to let it soak for about 20 minutes at a time. Yeah, and then refresh the water. Thumbs up. Spring onion for garnish. Always for garnish. You can cook with them. Uncle Rogers isn't always right, but in this particular occasion, he is. So we're going to garnish with them today. Yeah. And I'm going to cut off the feet. Is that, yeah, the roots? The I root. Call it. Yeah, I call it the feet just for fun. Okay. Tell this bit. Okay. We're going to cut it into strip, okay, today? Some people don't like to eat the top part. That's just normally because it's full of sand. But if you're washed and these are well prepped beforehand, you can use the top and there's still loads of flavour. It's actually a different sort of flavour in the top than there is from the bottom. Go cut it into this length, yeah? Mum's getting a proper Michelin star here with all the... Uh, <laughs> it's got to be the exact same length. Right, strip. While Mum's doing this, if you like motorbikes, follow my motorbike page, Chin Man Rides. Or even better, if you like Pokemon cards, follow Geek Out Industries. Because I do Pokemon card openings there because I am a giant child. So if you like that kind of thing, oh, I do swear on both channels. So if you don't like swearing, don't go there. Right, it's all done. Oh, it's all done now. And then we're gonna teach you how to make them really nice and curly. Because I've seen people pick the, uh, the green up and then wrap it around something to try and make it curly. Don't do that. What is this, Ma? Water. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna just throw it in there and get, soak it. Yeah, cold water. The colder the better. And yeah. these will literally just curl. curl up. Yeah. To about five to 10 minutes. And we're just gonna leave them into yeah. there. And then when we just wanna garnish with them, we're gonna take them out, dry them off on some paper, and then put them on top. So now we need to prep an onion. Cut both ends off. Then you could just cut it straight in half and then peel it like an, I was gonna say apple, but you don't really peel an apple like that. No, peel it as you. Like an orange. Yeah, peeling off this. Like a pungent orange. Yeah. Then we're gonna cut it thin today, okay? Yeah, you want these really thin. Really thin, okay. Carrot. We're going to use about half of that. I'm going to cook, not cook, but cut much stick, all right? And then you come across the top and that way you get your nice little match sticks. Just like this. So now we're going to chop up some chilies into discs. We're going to be using chilies instead of peppers, but you can use peppers if you don't want the heat of the chilies. Yeah, I think it tastes nice. Yeah. Cut tops off. The green peppers or the chili peppers actually taste like green peppers or bell peppers. And we're just going to cut these up into little disc shapes. The moon have landed. The moon doesn't land anywhere, ma. <laughs> you land on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got some garlic granules here. They're not the same ones you can get in the, I was going to say takeaway, in the supermarkets. They're larger, I think they're the 8 slash 16 mesh. And we're just going to pour some boiling hot water on these and let them sit for about 20 minutes, drain them, and then they're ready to use. Okay, so we're going to now make the dry batter mix and we're just going to put some potato starch and just using potato starch this time. Now in the first cookbook and in the second one we use a different kind of flour batter, but this is one of the main three that we haven't covered in the two books. There's the potato starch or the starch and the custard powder, starch and flour and just starch on its own. So we thought we'd cover this one today. The source for this though is actually in the second cookbook. If you want to know where to get that, just comment below. And we're going to add some, what's this, Ma? Salt. Salt. <laughs> and a bit of MSG. Touch White of, pepper. Yeah. I'm just going to mix this all in. If you want to know where to get MSG or the ingredients we're using in the videos, just comment below and we'll get back to you. Also, we have done the old school version of this before. It's one of our first videos. I'll put a link up here somewhere. I think that's um, mixed quite well now. Yeah. So then we're just gonna place the beef into the starch mix. I'm gonna coat it. 
You want to coat this really well. This just helps the egg in the next stage stick to it. Shake off excess and then place it back into the bowl you got it from. Then we're just going to crack an egg white into this, aren't we, Ma? Yeah, just the egg white. Yeah. We don't use the egg yolk, typically. You can do, but that adds fat to the batter mix, which makes it harder to go crispy. And then we're just going to mix this in. Make sure they're all coated, right? When it's well mixed, we're just going to place it back into... The tray. The tray of what, uh, starch. Yep, the mixture. Yeah. They do stick together, just loosen them up a little bit. You know? Yeah, even if they fall in a big clump, it's not too much of an issue because you can just use your hands it. to break yes. it up. Nice little pro tip here. If you flour your hands first, starch them, before you start touching the meat, you don't end up with what we call like concrete fingers, which is where you just get loads and loads and loads of batter on it. Or use gloves. <laughs> And then when they're coated, give them a little squeeze. That just helps the batter stick better. Now we're ready to cook these off. And if you notice, see, no concrete fingers. And those of you at home who have done this before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Right, so we've got some veg oil here and we want it over about 100... We've got yeah, some... 180. 180, thank you. My, I brain farted then, which is about 356 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just going to place this in all gently. Don't worry if they don't look like they're going brown. Starch doesn't brown, which is why some places put flour in the mix, because that helps it brown a little bit. Or they put the custard powder, because again, custard powder makes it yellow. Yeah, that's right, custard powder. And gives powder. it color. You can try whichever version you like. Yeah, if you want the custard powder version of this, um, comment and I will link it for you below, because we have done that before. Yeah, we have. It should take about 10 minutes or so? Yeah, I'd reckon about yeah. 10 minutes. Just gently stir it around. Yeah. If you think they are sticking together, you can just break it apart. Yeah, they're quite forgiving. Also, if you want to double fry these, you can, but you don't really have to, that the outside is going to dry out a lot. And I mean an incredible amount. Double frying is something you usually do when you're using something like chicken, because you want to dry out the outside without overcooking the inside. But because we're trying to get this crispy, we're just going to deep fry it till it's the crispiest thing on the planet. How crispy is it going to be, Mum? It's going to be incredible. That was crispy. disappointing. I was expecting something insane to come for you. <laughs> it didn't happen this time. Maybe next time. Side note, you don't want to overcook these either because they will just go really better. So these are done now. We're just going to take them out, put them on some kitchen towel and then we're going to get on with making the sauce. sauce. Oh, that was nicely <laughs> timed. That, we didn't plan that. Right, so we're just going to put some veg oil into the pan here. Veg oil and the pre-prepared garlic granule. And we're going to get some salt. Touch of MSG. And we want to brown that MSG off. Because what we're doing there is we're creating the, I can never say it, Milnard, Melnard, Mallard reaction. And that's just the flavor that you get that's really intense. That's why steak tastes so good. And then I'm gonna add some water. Orange squash. Yes, orange squash. White vinegar. Thank you, Ma. Tomato ketchup. Yeah. Now we prefer the old school way of making a sweet and sour base where you actually make the sweet and sour sauce yourself but lots of takeaways are doing it this way nowadays. And we're here to show you how everyone does it, not just the way we prefer, because that would be pretentious and we'd just rather show you different ways because some ways are good and some ways are better. But that's for you to decide because cooking is what, Ma? Cooking is a deception, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> cooking is about deceiving people around you. Yeah, that's like, that's deceiving. <laughs> I'm just adding sugar when mum deceives you. It's, it, cooking is about perception. Oh yeah. I'm gonna put in a dash of that soil. Yeah, just this, just for a little bit of color. Yeah, just a touch. That's it. And lastly is a um, the hoisin. Hoisin. Now back in the day, like the old recipe we showed you, we make the flavor from this from different sources. But this is a quick ver variation. It does taste completely different, but it doesn't taste bad. It's just different. A lot of people often 
say, I think that version tastes bad or I think this version tastes good. I personally like essentially all the ways that people do it. Yeah. If they're just different. It's Look. just like some day you prefer that flavor. Yeah. And other day you prefer the other flavor. You Precisely. Know? It's, yes. it's just, just what you prefer on that day. Yes. This is completely optional, but I'm going to be putting some food coloring in. That just makes it really bright red. You can see it's getting red there now. Yeah, and some chili flakes. And we're just going to reduce this a little bit. So now it's reduced down to a light syrup consistency. We're going to put in some carrots. Onion. And, and the jalapeno. Sliced red chilies, not jalapenos. Oh, sliced red chili. <laughs> Sorry, excuse Close. my English. And then we're going to cook these off for about a minute. <laughs> Do you want to say that again, Ma? Sliced red chili. <laughs> there we go. And after about a minute, we're going to add our the beef. beef. And then we're going to let this coat all of that meat. And there it's done. So, we've got these new chopsticks. Wow. Mm. Fancy. Gold. Wow, gold. I like gold. Anyway. Gold! Always believe in your soul. Who sing that song? I don't know if I got the words right either. Spanda Ballet. Spanda yeah. Ballet. Yeah, Spanda Ballet. Right. Wow. I can't wait for this. This is so, well, relatively easy. You can taste that beef. Personally, I do prefer the version in our first cookbook, but it's just what you're brought up on. If you're relatively new, the last sort of like 15 years of Chinese food, you're more likely to have gotten this version. If you're like my age, so 30 plus, you're more likely to have had or remember the older version. If you've never had it before, how would you explain it, Ma? Crunchy, tasty, and you can taste the whole of all the flavor in my one mouthful. Yeah, also I would say it's got a nice earthy flavour from the hoisin sauce. You can really taste that in there and if you've ever eaten it before and thought that's, it's like sweet and sour but it's not, a lot of the time it's just because they've added hoisin sauce into it. There's like four sauces that are interchangeable that are sometimes on a menu or for capital, Peking, Cantonese and sometimes EXO sauce. They can all appear on the same menu or they could be named another thing on another menu. This, that's just Chinese takeaway. There's no like hard and fast way of doing it because it's fast food and not really traditional Chinese food. Doesn't mean it's bad. What you think is done everywhere isn't always done the same everywhere. Yeah. It's a different style of cooking. Mm -hmm. And different style of eating. There's no other way, just put it in your mouth and eat and chew. I've tried eating through my eye before, it doesn't work out very well. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and comment and hit the notification button to keep us on your feed. Commenting and liking costs absolutely nothing and it really helps grow our channel like massively. So if you could do that, that'd be amazing. I, I would have edited this out, but mum's been stood there like that for about a minute eating. Yeah, right. Happy cooking, happy eating. There we See go. you next time. See you next time. Take care.